hello everyone welcome back to my channel i'm your host miss kk and this is the way so today we are talking about bank charges i've been meaning to do this video for some time now and i finally got down to it and why bank charges and of all things um so over the years there have been so many evolution around the banking sector especially with technology that has come in so back in the days if you really wanted to do anything with you on your bank account you po you possibly had to go to the bank fill in some form and wait for a few days to get whatever it is that you want to do but nowadays it is just a click of a button we have cell phone banking we have wallets we have internet banking we have mobile apps and things have gotten so much easier on how to bank and with all of that companies have invested in so much money in those solutions that somehow somewhere we as end consumer needs to pay for those so even if we don't know in as much as it's become accessible and beneficial to us it has also become costly in one way or another and because of the fact that different uh, banks are offering different things there's often different bank charges associated with different type of transaction for example if you are drawing money cash that may attract different bank charges to someone that is actually transferring money via uh, cell phone banking or transferring money via eft so today i'm going to look at the four major banks in namibia and just highlight a few things that i've that i've gotten from my brief research this video is no means sponsored by any bank and I'm not representing any banks. This is basically uh, informed by information that's available on the internet. So yours is to actually listen and see the type of bank account that you have and maybe compare the bank charges that you are incurring with the bank charges that other people are incurring and maybe possibly uh, make an informed decision with you, whether you are getting the most out of your bank or you need to possibly switch banks. So um, I've just made a summary on my computer here. So if you do see me looking down, I am looking at the summary that I've made on my computer and I've just done a comparison. So I'm going to talk through that comparison. So there's sort of um, different types of bank accounts that are offered by different banks. And in Namibia, I'm talking about the four banks it is net bank fnb standard bank and bank ventuk there is also other banks that i'm not including in in here the like of bic let's say and the like but these are the four major banks that i'm going to be focusing on so how do you really get uh differentiate between the type of bank accounts that you have so banks have different bank accounts that are tailored and uh, and marketed toward different age groups and towards different income levels. So there's obviously bank accounts that are geared towards children. Those ones tend to have low bank fees or minimal management account fees to just help the parents um, introduce their kids into the banking system. And obviously banks are willing to, you know, take a low cut on those because they know it's just a matter of time before these kids grow up and they start earning an income and they are more likely to convert to the bank their parents has introduced them to. So it's just a matter of time before they convert them to actual paying customers then there is also accounts called pay as you go so pay as you go are accounts really that are marketed towards people that don't have a regular income so they pay as and when they transact so this type of customers generally don't trans transact quite a lot so it saves them a lot of money instead of having a flat fee and not actually getting the benefit of that flat fee so you pay as you transact so if you don't transact anything for the month that means your bank charges is likely to be zero if not minimal whereas uh, if you transact a lot that month then your bank charges are likely to increase depending on the value of your transaction and then we have the common bank account that a lot of young professionals have which is called bundled account and in the bundled account you need to qualify depending on your income and your age etc and these are normally marketed towards us as young professionals and they are categorized in different you know um groups they have gold they've platinum they've silver and they've you know all these things so this is basically the type of bank accounts that we are talking about today and there is different type of bank charges just like there is different type of bank accounts there is different types of bank charges that you need to uh, actually be aware of but most of the banks have a basic if it's not a pay as you go account pay as you go remember i said that you pay as and when you transact you don't pay a predetermined fee per month but most of the other bundled account have what is called a monthly management fee so this is a basic minimum fee that the bank will put through on your account regardless of how much you transact so depending on the time Type of account that you have if you if you have a pay as you go you might not have a, a account management fee but if you have a bundled fee the, these things are normally predetermined to say for a gold account at net bank for example it might be 145 a month for for a bank account a gold account at fnb it might be 140 so depending on which bank you have your monthly management account may be different then you obviously have other type of bank charges that are associated with cash cash is actually becoming an expensive way to transact if i look at 
the comparison of the different types of bank charges associated with a different type of method of payment cash is actually becoming the most expensive way to transact because it normally requires labor so the bank needs to employ people to help you draw the cash deposit the cash etc although they have introduced you know um deposit at the atm without a bank personnel employee being involved it's actually the most expensive way to transact if you draw money uh, from the bank account it's likely to be expensive as, as opposed to paying someone uh, via an eft so just bear in mind that the different ways of transacting are associated with different amounts of the bank charges so you have cash you have swiping so when you swipe also some banks it's free sometimes it's not free for certain banks you have debit orders and standing orders just because you have a debit order that goes off your account it doesn't mean you are not charged on it some banks have free debit orders some are actually charging per debit order that goes off your account you have e-wallets um which is not not e-wallet you have wallets because e-wallet is a particular bank you have net bank wallet blue wallet easy wallet e-wallet so all those wallets actually have different bank charges depending on the bank that you have and most of them are actually even working on a sliding scale if you send someone money between this much and this much you pay this if you send some someone someone money between this much and this much you pay this much so it's very important to be aware of the type of bank charges associated with the type of uh, payment method that you're likely to use so that you can actually use the payment method that is cheaper for you so a lot of people yes default to wallets but wallets aren't the easiest way or and the cheapest way to transact if in some instances it might be but there are other cheaper ways if not free ways to transact so and also for a lot of us we tend to pay things using our bank accounts for example buying electricity buying airtime paying your dstv with your bank account those things also attract bank charges because you are basically um be using the bank to uh you know fulfill a service so the bank also needs to get a commission for the transaction that you are getting so all those things really play a huge factor and it's very important to be cognizant of the type of charges associated with each on your bank account so that you can determine which one is cheaper so based off this i went on the internet and i pulled up four bank accounts uh, a gold account at netbank at fnb at standard bank at bank took this i did about a month ago so if anything has changed please go and check with your bank if any of this have changed so what i've noticed that most of the gold accounts the reason why i'm using the gold account is because a lot of us as young professionals that watch my channel i have qualified for bank uh for gold accounts and these gold accounts are a bundled fee account which is an easier way and a cheaper way to actually afford your banking because if something is bundled they tell you 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 pay a flat fee and beyond that certain things may be free and certain things may be chargeable so in terms of the qualification you they normally look at income level so for net bank you need to be making between three thousand and forty four thousand to be able to qualify for this account for fnb you need to be making between uh, five thousand to 30,000 um, to qualify for this account for uh, Standard Bank, you need to have at least 7,000 and for Bank Ventuk, you need to have at least 15,000. So depending on your income level, you may or you may not qualify for this gold account. And um, you must check in with your bank because if you're banking with a Bank Ventuk and you see that they require you to have 15,000 to qualify for a gold account. But if you are banking with NetBank, you only need 3,000 to qualify for a gold account. So there you can already see the basis of the starting point of when you qualify differs between different banks so i just need you to be cognizant of this as you do your research in determining which bank account uh, which bank to open your bank account with or which bank to switch to and then i looked at the monthly management fee this is the flat fee that is charged to everyone that has a gold account at these particular banks remember i said this was at the point in time i don't know by the when i did this research if anything has changed since then so at net bank they will charge you at least 142 per month to uh, as a, a flat management fee so whether you transact or not 142 would go off your bank account at at fnb this is 130 at um, uh, standard bank this is 145 and at um bank Ventuk, this is 225 so basically um this is the flat fee at 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 bank Ventuk, it is the highest i don't know why this is so high compared to the other banks but based on my brief research this is what i could find
let's look at cash withdrawal fees so cash withdrawal fees are actually a little bit complicated to understand but i hope you will be able to follow so netbank says that for every hundred dollar that you withdraw they will charge you two dollar sixty so if you withdraw a hundred they will charge you two dollar sixty if you withdraw two a thousand they will charge you 26 dollars and you need to do the math so basically every hundred dollar is two dollar sixty and then you must now do the amount that you are, you are withdrawing divided by a hundred times two dollar sixty to get to the bank charges for f and b they have something slightly different they will tell you that if you are on their gold account you have the first three thousand for free meaning you can withdraw up to three thousand without incurring any bank charges thereafter they will charge you fifteen dollars plus an additional ten dollar for every five hundred dollar that you withdraw so if you were to withdraw three thousand on f and b gold account you would have zero bank charges but if you are to withdraw three thousand five hundred on that account they will charge you ten fifteen dollars because you only withdraw one batch of five hundred so the things really get a little bit trickier to calculate so when you withdraw you need to be cognizant of how much is it going to attract in terms of withdrawal fees then let's move on to um, F, a standard bank. Standard bank says they will charge you $2.60 for every 100 but it's limited to 90 So the difference between standard bank and a net bank. So net bank says I will charge you $2 for every $100 that you withdraw. And the more you withdraw, the more you get charged. Where a standard bank is say I will charge you $2.60 for every $100 that you withdraw, but I will keep it to 90 So once that amount, once that bank charges reaches $90, i am not going to increase any further. So there is a cap on their withdrawal fee at Standard Bank. And Bank Ventuk also says $11 per $300 limited to $55. So Bank Ventuk has a limit. Standard Bank has a limit. F&B... Uh, has that free element of it, but but NetBank doesn't have a cap. So you now need to go and look at your bank account and see if I were to withdraw, what bank charges are associated. As you can see here, it's not straightforward. It is not similar across the bank. So you need to evaluate uh, which bank account to use. So a typical example here is I bank with NetBank. My husband banks with um, F&B. So when we need to withdraw money, for example, for the construction, we need to look at on which bank account it will be easier to withdraw netbank or fnb so the first 300 by default no uh question asked we are going to take it on fnb because it's free thereafter we need to look at if we we're to withdraw it on netbank is it cheaper if we we're to withdraw it on uh bank uh, fnb is it cheaper so that is the type of conversation we have when we when it comes to withdrawal so if you don't transact a lot in cash this may not affect you but if you do transact a lot in cash this is definitely going to impact you then we have debit orders for all the three banks i would just uh, net bank fnb and, and standard rate from what i could pick up they are free except on uh bank vintage they're charging to twelve dollar 86 for a debit order so like i've mentioned yes it is free or not free depending on whatever bank you have so the other thing that i actually wanted to look at is for all the other banks swiping um efts and prepaid uh, electricity and airtime they are free at net bank free at, at standard bank and free at fnb but swiping and swiping and eft tend not to be free at bank to chrome what i could pick up there's a four dollar ninety for every swiping at bank Ventuk and there's about a $13.65 for a beneficiary payment so from this uh, exercise that i've done so far it looks like bank fund took a slightly expensive in terms of bank fees but this is based on the facts that i could find on the internet and it may have changed from when i did this research right so the last thing i really really want to touch on is the wallet so the wallet here is uh, netbank's wallet is called netbank money wallet then you have the e-wallet at fnb then you have the blue wallet at standard bank and then you have easy wallet at bank Ventuk. So at NetBank, right, they will charge you $11 per every 500 that you send. Okay, this has actually changed the way I view things, right? Um, people like to be e-walleted and all of this because it's cheaper for them. But for the person that is sending the money, it's actually expensive. So if someone were to ask me to send them 500 on NetBank, I will only be charged $11. But if they asked me to 
send them 600 then i'm all, all of a sudden being charged 11 dollar times two so i'm so conscious of this fact that i'm keen to send someone 500 but i'm not keen to send someone anything between 500 600 and a thousand because i know it's not worth my bank charges but the moment it goes over a thousand i'm i'm all of a sudden also prepared to pay the bank charges so depending on the amount that you send by you sending a hundred dollar extra if someone were to ask you 500 it's 11 dollar but if someone to, were to ask you 600 and it's all of a sudden 30 oh 22 dollars is it really worth it so i'm giving you a hundred dollar extra but from that hundred dollar you are going to be charged an 11 dollar extra so it's just these things that you need to be cognizant of the fact when you are sending people money and so f and b they charge you ten dollar for every two thousand dollars for for e-wallet so their their threshold is a lot higher at at f and b than it is at uh net bank whereas standard bank charges you twelve dollar for every five hundred so if you look at standard bank it's twelve dollar for every hundred and if you look at net bank it's eleven dollar for every five hundred so it's cheaper to send five hundred at net bank than it is to send five hundred at standard bank and um and bank fintech has 11 dollar for every 500 and that is actually you know um similar with net bank so like the reason why i'm doing this is because we transact blindly you know when i look at people um struggling to budget and struggling to effectively track their expenses on a monthly basis number one is because we don't even th sit down to think what is the effective way to pay my bills on a monthly basis so personally i i sort of when i do my budget i have the categories of the expenses the amount and next to it i have the method of payment so all my savings, all my policies, all my uh, loans, those ones are automatic debit orders. Then I have recipients that I give on a monthly basis, like the likes of my mother, etc. Those ones I have EFT, where I normally add them as a beneficiary and I pay them via EFT. Then I have, you know, municipality rates and taxes, etc. Those ones I also pay via EFT. Then, you know, you have um, petrol and all of this. Swiping on my account is free. Those ones I swipe and groceries, all those ones I swipe because I have unlimited swiping, which is free. And then thereafter, I have now things that would require me to pay cash. And those ones I strategize whether I must draw the money and pay this person or I must wallet the money myself and then withdraw it. Because at some stage, it's actually cheaper to wallet the money to yourself and withdraw it then you actually directly withdrawing it so let me just take a typical example at my bank you are charged two dollar sixty for every hundred dollar that you withdraw and uh because of that if you withdraw three thousand right if i withdraw three thousand just give me a second if i withdraw three thousand and i want to calculate how much that would be i would say three thousand divided by hundred that's about thirty and i'll say thirty times 30 times, um, sorry, 30 times $2.60, $2.60. So that means I'll, for that 3000 I'll be charged about $78 to withdraw that. Whereas e-wallet, it is, the wallet fee is about, for 5000 it's about $32 to, to withdraw 5000 So why must I spend... 78 to withdraw when I can e-wallet myself the 3000 and actually draw it from the ATM. So this is the type of sort of unfortunately the reality of how complicated bank charges has become and for people that are really conscious about money and conscious about saving money in all sort of, sort of places uh we actually look at this thing in determining which one will be the effective way to actually pay your bank charges. So again this is all I had from this video but the message I want you to take home here is different banks have different bank charges. So yours is to do, is your bank offering you the best in terms of bank charges? And number two, are you effectively paying your bills correctly, depending on the charges that are associated with your bank account? Number three, are you aware of which of the, of the bank payments are free on your account and which ones are chargeable? So for example, certain accounts, EFTs and swiping is free, but work cash withdrawal isn't and when you go to the shop is it maybe cheaper to swipe something than going to the atm and withdraw money and people some people shy, shy away from swiping for a packet of sweet or swiping for you know a bag of apples at the shop but for me i don't even shy away because i know swiping is free but if i were to go get that hundred dollar outside and withdraw it and come and pay the tell i'm actually incurring two dollars sixty for that when i could actually just pay that thing for free 
so yeah so this is really really all i had from this video and also remember that banking is not just about bank charges and it's not it's not just about what you can get on your transactional account you must look at it holistically so some banks may have uh, bank expensive bank charges but they actually offer competitive interest rate in terms of investment they may actually even offer competitive interest rate in terms of home loan and car loans etc so look at your view holistically and see are you getting the most of your money from banking with bank bank x comparing to bank y have i changed bank in my careers yes in my first year of working i used to bank with another bank the customer service there was just really not what i was expecting i would go there wanting a qualification letter from the bank and it's just taking time for me to actually get that qualification letter and it got me to a point where you know what i just felt like i was begging these people to actually offer me the customer service i deserve so i went to another bank so don't sit around getting substandard service at one bank when you actually can save a lot of money going to another bank and actually uh, be better off banking with another bank yes so this is all i had from this video thank you so much for watching and i hope you learn one thing or two and until next time please don't forget to share the videos with your friends and family so that we can learn together and keep safe bye, -bye.